So we're going to go through the workflow of our project. Okay, so the first part of our workflow, of course, is uh, modeling. Um, what we will do is usually when we start our project, we will have a layout file of um, the house that we want to model or do ArchViz on. And these layout files are usually in a picture format. It's either a PNG or a JPEG file. So what we will do is we will bring it into AutoCAD to trace out this layout into an AutoCAD format which we will then um, bring it into 3D Studio Max. It's a lot easier to model um, our house um, with the layout file from AutoCAD rather than just a picture format. You know, after that, we will then um, model the actual house, put in the walls, the windows, the doors, the floors, you know, and, and when we have all these structural side of the models done up, we'll do a first import into Unreal Engine because a lot of um, a lot of issues, light map issues, um, um, will surface out if you didn't model your your uh, models properly. So while while the file is still pretty light, you know, um, there's still not a lot of furnishings and furniture inside the three D Studio Max file and Unreal Engine file. We will we will do a first import to test because most of the um, important things, uh, important shadows are actually on the floor and on the walls. So it would be a good idea just to do a first run test first on, on these things. And once we are happy with the result, um, we will then continue with our modeling. We will bring in the furnishings, the, the, the furnitures, you know, the 3D models of all these things and we start designing. You know, um, of course, we, we won't be focusing on materials yet. Um, we will just be putting in all our 3D models to to then import it in after that into Unreal Engine again. So when we bring it into Unreal Engine again, that's when we will do the materials. We will focus a lot more on the lighting, you know, and, and post-processing and, and, and all this stuff. It's also the time if you want to put in blueprints and interactivity into Unreal Engine, this is the time. So once we have a final, final, um, file unreal engine file unreal engine project that we are really happy about we will crank up the settings uh, the light settings and then we will do a final light baking you know so that's when the really nice soft shadows will come out the contact shadows will will appear and and that's when uh, I'm, I'm happy to present it to our customers so the first software we're going to discuss about is AutoCAD Okay, so AutoCAD is used to get a one-to-one -one layout file from the pictures, you know, so, so, you know, the pictures is just a picture, but we want to, to create a, a AutoCAD file with a proper dimensions on it. And then after that, through this AutoCAD file, we will then bring in into 3D Studio Max to model. So it's a lot easier to model you with an AutoCAD layout file rather than just using the pictures themselves. And of course, um, you know, um, AutoCAD is also used for detailed drawings where dimensions are added and it's easier to communicate about these details um, through an AutoCAD file. You know, especially when we want to send these detailed drawings for building or fabrication. So that's when AutoCAD is really useful. But for the purpose of this tutorial, because we are focusing more on the artistic side of things, um, We'll just be using AutoCAD to create the layout file. So the next software I'm going to discuss more is 3D Studio Max. So 3D Studio Max is used to model a house. Um, again, traditionally, a lot of people, even right now in the industry, um, designers are still doing 2D renderings, uh, or rather 3D renderings for 2D images or videos in 3D Studio Max. I mean, a lot of the professionals are still doing this. But because we want to focus on real time, we will not be focusing on material creation in 3D Studio Max. We will only be using it purely to do modeling. And then after that, again, we will import it into Unreal Engine to do the materials. So, so um, it's very important to, um, to know that um, for the purpose of this tutorial, we will not be focusing too much on materials inside 3D Studio Max. So when we do 3D Studio Max, when you install your 3D Studio Max, um, there are some scripts that um, I use very often. I try very much to, to keep it vanilla, but, but um, in, in this tutorial, um, 
because different people work differently but these two scripts i i feel they are very important they help me um tremendously sp speed up in my um modeling uh, and in my in my project so um again when i go through the actual modeling in 3d studio max i'll talk about these scripts again so for now it's just uh, uh good to know about these scripts and finally i think some some setup in 3d studio max they are pretty important is that um, we must know that in Unreal Engine, we use centimeters as the main dimension. But in 3D Studio Max, um, I know some professionals, they use millimeters. So uh, it really depends on you. I, I model in millimeters, but then um, when I use Unreal Studio or Datasmith to bring it into Unreal Engine, it, it converts them to centimeters for me. So it's really up to you. But if you are not using Unreal Studio, my experience is use model in centimeters is a lot easier of course i will go through snapping again um, when we start the actual modeling so um, a lot of light leaks light issues also happens in unreal engine because the snapping will not really um, um, were not really well done things are not snapped to the ground so and stuff like that so so i think it's it's really useful tool in 3d studio max and it's important so the next software I'm going to talk about is Unreal Engine. So this is where you know the most magic and the most fun happens uh, in this software. So for this tutorial, we will use Unreal Engine to focus on creating materials, you know, doing up the lighting and putting in a bit of post processing, you know, such as bloom or contrast and stuff like that. You know, so so um, Unreal Engine is essential, especially when we are talking about real time with interactivity you know like like if you want to show your your clients that you can change color or change furniture inside your walkthrough then you need unreal engine to do so and if you want to put on a vr headset and to walk around these models uh, real time then you need a game engine like unreal engine to do so i'm not talking about a 360 video or a 360 picture i think um, 3d studio max can achieve that but if you are talking about actual VR walkthrough with blueprint interactivity, then you need a game engine like Unreal Engine. Of course, when talking about game engine, I mentioned about Unity. Um, it's another um, engine that is very popular. But um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I will just go through Unreal Engine. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I also want to go through just a, a, a couple of softwares, other softwares that we may or may not use in our projects, but they are good to know. You know, um, when people are talking about these softwares, it's good to know what they are. So I'm sure you, you know, if you have been in the industry for a while, you'll know what is SketchUp. It's like 3D Studio Max, but I think it's a lot easier to pick up. It's um, a lot more intuitive to model using SketchUp. But um, I, we just find that... Um, some of the light maps uh, doesn't really work out well with SketchUp, which is why we stick with 3D Studio Max. You know, V-Ray, of course, um, is a global illumination uh, uh, software that we use to render 2D images. Crazy Bum is a is a good one. Basically, um, it's used to generate very um, important maps such as normal maps, roughness maps, and and height maps from a normal picture file. You know, so so. Um, I'll go through more when we go through materials, but this these maps are important. So, so um, rather than creating them manually using Crazy Bum, is uh, is very effective. Bitmap to material is something like Crazy Bum, just that there's a lot more advanced stuff. I don't use it a lot, uh, but but if you if you want a lot more control over your materials, this is a good software to get into. Substance Designer as well is a uh, is is to procedurally create materials. So so if you can't find a let's say a a, a texture on Google, you know or or any website and it's there's some element some kind of materials that you want to go for, you probably most probably can create them using Substance Designer. So again, this is a whole new um, tutorial series just to learn substance. So we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Um, but but these are very good tools to use, especially if you want to bring your 
Archbis to the next level. Speed tree as well. I love using speed trees. It's, it's used to create great looking trees without much effort. Um, so is is if you are doing exterior scenes, then this is uh, something that you want to consider using. So yeah, I think um, that's about it for the softwares. Um, of course, there are a lot of other softwares in the universe. Um, if you think that um, there are other softwares that are worth mentioning, feel free to comment in the video to share with us um, what what these software are that you use and how do they benefit you. I think I think the community would love to hear from you as well. So before we end, I just want to share a bit more on how you can support the channel. So first of all, um, all the PowerPoint files that we use in this tutorial, you can download it. So when you download the PowerPoint files and any project files that we give to the channel through Gumroad, your email will be um, captured by us. So we will send some marketing materials in the future if you allow us to do so. Of course, you can choose to opt out, but this will help us in our marketing efforts. Of course, um, the final UE4 project file, uh, it will be for sale as well. So if uh, it, is, it is priced at a usual tutorial cost fee, but this is absolutely not compulsory. So if you feel you want to support the channel, you can get the UE4 project file um, for a price. So all these links, uh, as we are preparing for the YouTube uh, videos, we will slowly add all these files into our Gumroad page. So some are not ready yet, some are already can be downloaded. So you can refer to the YouTube description for the links to where to download these project files. And also, I just want to share with you the way to contact us. We have a YouTube channel. Um, you can contact us directly through email. And of course, the easiest way to find us actually is through our Facebook channel. You can directly message us. So these are the links to where you can contact us. If you have any questions, you need any help, uh, feel free to just look for us. Uh, of course, um, if you can remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button. So when we post a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lesson.